One of the scariest things that should keep every believer at wake at night is that we've been lied to about sin and what truly happens even after we receive forgiveness. And it's no wonder that we have seen a crazy rise in the level of sexual immorality among church leaders, worship leaders, and even believers in general. This deception in part explains the laxity towards sin among believers and not just any kind of sin, sexual sin, because the scriptures actually tell us sin may be sin, but sexual sin stands apart because it's against our own body. So gone are the days where people wept and cried when they heard the Lord through sin. Today, it's totally common and normal that a worship minister, a church leader, a believer engages in immorality and then the next morning they are leading worship, giving the word with power and we know we are comfortable because once we ask for forgiveness and repent, God wipes the slate clean. But is that really what happens? Let's compare what really happens versus what we think happens. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, we see the account where Nathan confronts David about his sexual immorality. And from verse 7, Nathan goes on to explain to David that God is disappointed in him and releases some of the consequences that are going to happen to David and his household. Verse 10, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Now you see, when we think about David and his fall into sin, all we think about is Psalms 51, you know, you know, renew the right spirit within me, take not away your Holy Ghost from me, and you know, all these warm fuzzy feelings when you're actually repenting. But we don't see the suffering that David went through being chased around for years by his son and also having his son sleep in public with all his wives. Because what we really want to pay attention here is verse 14. God says, however, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you shall surely die. Remember, God is saying because of this deed, verse 14, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Now, the main thing that happens when we sin, because don't think I'm saying, okay, as believers, we are also going to face consequences for our sin as David did and all the repercussions of his son raping his his own daughter and then his son killing his son not necessarily the case okay in christ it's different but one thing that is not different is verse 14 god is telling us you lose authority the moment you give yourself into sin and not just any kind of sin sexual immorality so you have this great king that god has raised and has given him victories and he is on course to become one of the greatest kings in history but God is saying you have given occasion to the enemy to blaspheme meaning you have lost authority blaspheme means wow look at the person you are calling a great king we have no respect for him again because he could kill someone just for their wife and that is the thing many believers many church leaders today have lost their authority on many subject matters particularly sexual purity so there is a difference between power and authority and that's really what i want us to understand here because many people just think it's okay i'm going to do it i'm going to ask for forgiveness and then life is going to move on no it doesn't happen that way you will be forgiven there may not be repercussions or consequences which is not always the case but one thing you're guaranteed to lose is your authority as believers we often focus on power but we fail to realize what is even more important than power and that is authority let's look at the difference in scriptures Luke 10 verse 19, Jesus speaking to his disciples says, I have given you authority to tread upon the snakes and scorpions and the lions. Remember the word the authority and the Greek word used there is exosian, which means delegated influence, just like the king can delegate influence to the ambassador to operate and exert in a foreign territory 
as the king. That is authority. It's not necessarily power. Power will come with the army. And we can see power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where Jesus says, And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And the word for power there is dynamin from dunamai, like false, miraculous power. So you see that the Holy Ghost is the power to execute, you know, the ability to get work done. But you need authority to actually get the work done, which is delegated influence from a king saying, now you have the authority to make this declaration or to command for this to be done. But once you make the command, you now need power, whether it's from the army or it's from the workers you have that come and actually do the work. In this case, the Holy Spirit is the one providing the power, but Jesus is giving us the authority to actually execute the power of the Holy Ghost. So if you understand the difference between power and authority, then one particular thing that happens every time the devil draws us into sin, and particularly sexual sin, is to strip us of our authority. Okay, How many leaders cannot stand on their altar and preach forcefully and powerfully against sexual immorality? Because secretly, they are guilty of it, and so they may have the power, the words, the anointing to preach, but they don't have the authority because even when they try to preach or talk about about it at the back of their mind the guilt is there and so there is no longer any authority but compare that to someone who by the grace of God kept themselves apart from all this they can teach and correct and rebuke with authority on that subject matter if a woman kept herself till marriage she has the authority to tell her daughters to keep themselves to marriage but if she engaged and had kids out of wedlock with what authority can she tell them to wait till marriage she may have the power to speak she may have the power as the adult of the house to speak but she doesn't have the authority so more often than not she's going to invite someone else who actually has authority by reason of not falling for the scene to actually give the instruction so in second samuel chapter 12 nathan is actually telling david that god is stripping you of authority you may still have power you may still have men who are willing to die in war for you david but i've stripped you of authority because now you have given the enemy the occasion to blaspheme and therefore i'm giving that authority to someone else and it's evidence in that the person is going to sleep with your wife now, many of us could read this and without proper knowledge and understanding of the context may not realize how significant this is because later we see David's son Absalom putting a tent outside and publicly going into his father's wives. Now, if we don't understand how that relates to authority, then let me just digress a little to paint the picture for us clearly because where I come from in Cameroon in the West region, there is that culture and tradition where when the chief of the village or the king of the village dies, the son wishes to succeed the king has to go on this retreat with all the wives of his late father and he's not crowned king or allowed to return from that retreat until he has impregnated at least one of those wives. The logic and understanding is in two parts. The first part is that one of the most prized and precious things to any man and a king in particular is his wife. So going into his wives is like usurping his authority. So once a boy returns with a child from his father's wife, he has kind of put an end to his father's authority and he has taken that authority upon himself now. And so whatever he says, they have to respect him as though they had respected his father. And two, so, just like we see in the wild, when one lion conquers a pride and defeats the reigning lion in that pride, his primary responsibility is to go into the lionesses to produce offspring of his own. And usually that is not possible if they already have nursing children. And that explains why the lion often kills the offsprings of the lion he just conquered so that the women can be ready for him to go in and produce offspring of his own to exert and stamp his authority as the new reigning king of the pride. So David kept his soul. David received mercy from God. He didn't lose the spirit of God. But one critical thing he lost was his authority. And it's the lack of that authority that resulted in the series of events that we later on see in his household. From incestuous rape, brother on brother murder, and even a coup d'etat to usurp his throne 
Those are the hallmarks of a king who has lost his authority, but not necessarily his power. He had the power to actually go against his son and defeated him. And we saw that later, but the authority was gone. So many believers, we need to realize that the biggest trap that the enemy sets is not so that you can fall and then he gloats that you have fallen. Because every time you fall or you give in to his temptation, you're literally dropping your authority at his feet and so tomorrow you can't rise and speak boldly you can't rise and address or challenge his agenda boldly because you may have the power but you don't have the authority if a tech engineer in a company is dismissed for bad behavior they may still have the power in other words the knowledge the the coding abilities the programming and hacking abilities to get into that company's system because probably they built the system but they don't have the authority to get into that system again by which if they try then they face legal consequences and finally, as a roundup, I'll put it to you, your purpose, your destiny, what God has called you to accomplish on the earth requires authority more than it requires power. So every time you're giving away your authority for a few minutes, a few seconds of pleasure and disobedience to God, you're literally aborting your own purpose and your own destiny. Because as Jesus said in Matthew, if the sword can no longer season, then it's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled on the foot. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And I have a question for you. What do you think is the best way for a believer to start restoring or rebuilding their authority? We'll be happy to learn from each other right in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and drop your thoughts down below. A big thank you to our patrons for supporting and helping us create this content. You too can do the same. The link is down below. I'm Bodas Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, stay blessed.